There exists on our planet an entire hidden world that has laid dormant for eons, but this world full of strange organisms from prehistoric times is slumbering no more. As global warming threatens the world's ice masses, some scientists have warned that sleeping in that same ice, completely isolated from the rest of the world, for tens of thousands of years could lurk deadly killers just waiting to be unleashed. In a quest to understand the potential threat, science has now discovered some of these ancient threats, and some were completely unknown to science until now. High up in the Tibetan mountains, scientists have labored to drill into some of the oldest and most pristine ice on Earth for years, and in doing so, brought back ice core samples that date back thousands and thousands of years. Two of these samples predate the earliest known human civilization by a whopping 11,000 years. Trapped within the ice lurks a sampling of the microscopic world present at the time the ice was formed. While the total biomass of trapped microbial life is vanishingly small, far less than seawater. Scientists have refined techniques to identify what life exists within that ancient ice. What they've discovered has been nothing short of revolutionary for science. The two samples were collected in 1992 and 2015, and while the ice was untouched for thousands of years, upon being removed the exterior was immediately contaminated with modern microbial life. For years, these icy cores were kept in frozen storage. The contents within kept pristine thanks to their icy prison. Recently, scientists discovered a way to at last melt the cores while eliminating any chance of modern contamination, allowing researchers to peer into the microbial world of prehistory. Keeping the samples in a cold room, the scientists used a sterilized bandsaw to saw away 0.2 inches of the entire outer layer of the ice core. Then they bathed the freshly sawed cores in ethanol to melt away a further 0.2 inches of ice. Finally, they used sterile water to melt away 0.2 more inches of ice. After losing over half an inch of ice, the cores were finally free of modern contaminants, and when scientists peered into their microscopes, they found a veritable Ice Age microbial Jurassic Park waiting for them. Investigating the two ice cores, scientists found 33 different groups of viruses with hundreds of individual members of each. Of these groups of viruses, though, the greatest discovery was the fact that a whopping 28 of them were completely unknown to scientists until now. Forebodingly, in a follow-up interview, one researcher stated that humanity is far from having sampled even the majority of estimated virus groups still alive in frozen ice around the world today, meaning there are more viruses lurking, waiting for their chance to be free of their icy prison than we ever dreamt of. Tibet is far from the only place on Earth that researchers are digging up ancient microbial life, though, and in 2017, scientists made a profound discovery when they brought up ice samples from the depths of a frozen Antarctic lake. This lake had laid frozen for many thousands of years, effectively cocooning its underwater environment from the outside world. There, scientists discovered a microbe that they hope may answer the ultimate question about viruses. Did viruses evolve as a unique form of life, or did they arise as a parasitic life form that could exist only by infecting healthy cells? The question is a tricky one to answer, and scientists aren't even sure that viruses are truly alive anyway. That's because every living thing on Earth is made up of cells except for viruses. Viruses are in essence nothing more than a piece of genetic material encased in a hard shell that has only a single function, infect healthy cells and use the cell's energy resources to replicate. While at first glance that seems like the definition of a living organism, uses energy and is able to replicate, the pure simplicity of the virus leaves scientists split on the question of them being alive or not. It has even been theorized that viruses are nothing more than the descendants of malfunctioning nanomachines made by aliens and dispersed into the universe billions of years ago. The theory makes some sense, as a specific type of nanomachine known as a von Neumann probe would be able to visit every star system in the galaxy in just a few tens of thousands of years, compared to the millions or more it would take using traditional ships full of aliens. That's because the von Neumann probe has a unique ability that is eerily similar to that of a virus. It's able to use matter it encounters to create a copy of itself, and it does so exponentially. One makes a perfect copy, then those two make two copies, then the four make now another four copies, and so on and so on. And in a very short amount of time, you could have millions of these probes being sent to every corner of the galaxy. Perhaps then viruses are a form of an alien von Neumann probe, but not one designed to explore the galaxy but rather to create life. Again, the theory does make some sort of sense, as scientists are still unable to explain how the basic building blocks of life came together to actually start life here on Earth. And yet it's known that at the very first moment life was possible on Earth, 
it sprung into existence. That is a rather astonishing coincidence. It could be that ancient alien viruses were programmed to put those basic building blocks together. If you think this is an outlandish supposition, then you should know that modern gene editing techniques use hijacked viruses to modify DNA directly. Perhaps it's possible a sufficiently advanced civilization could have created artificial viruses to build DNA in the first place, and then simply seeded the galaxy with it, letting the machines go to work and life spring into existence where it was able to survive its environment. If these original alien viruses were also made of small bits of genetic material and weren't completely artificial, then perhaps evolution affected those viruses in unexpected ways, leading to the evolution of all modern viruses in our world today. This is just a theory, of course, and there's no proof that aliens really did seed the galaxy with viruses to help grow life. What isn't theory, though, is the plausibility of these ancient viruses being a deadly threat to life today. Because viruses aren't truly alive in the sense that we understand it, they're able to survive their icy imprisonment. And scientists were shocked when a 30,000-year-old virus discovered in Siberia not only awoke, but began infecting healthy modern cells. This megavirus, so named because it's many times the size of what scientists thought was the biggest virus, infects amoebas. Once a victim has been found, the virus does much as any other virus, uses the amoeba to create more of its own kind eventually destroying the amoeba. While this particular virus is incapable of infecting humans, the realization that a 30,000-year-old virus could be woken up and infect modern life was a sobering one for scientists. Before you fly into a full-blown panic and start building your doomsday bunker, it's important to know that viruses are highly specialized things, which means it can be difficult to impossible for a virus to infect a host it hasn't evolved to attack. The one benefit we have against these prehistoric viruses is that many of these viruses weren't around when there was a large population of humans, meaning the odds that they evolved to attack human cells are not that great. So you're likely safe from the effects of these ancient viruses. Except you also might not be, and the entire world could be wiped out by an ancient superbug literally any day now. Listen, we hate to throw an UNO reverse card at you, but viruses also happen to be one of the fastest evolving life forms, if they are in fact even alive, in existence today. The HIV virus, for instance, is the fastest evolving entity known, and while it reproduces very sloppily and accumulates a great deal of genetic mutations as it does so, it also reproduces at a rate of billions of copies of itself every day. You really only need one good copy that randomly mutates to affect humans for a virus to become a global pandemic. Then, of course, there's also the fact that scientists fear as the world melts, ancient strands of current diseases could go on a global comeback tour. Since we haven't been exposed to these diseases for thousands of years, modern humans would have virtually no defense against these microbial invaders. Even if a vaccine were to be developed, well, the Karens of the world would likely claim it causes autism and humans would die anyways. Of course, since global warming is just a giant hoax perpetrated by big science to sell more umbrellas, we really don't have to worry about any ancient viruses coming back to life. Hey, now that you made it through the video, maybe you'd like to enjoy another great vid. You know, before ancient alien viruses turn us into Resident Evil tyrants. Why not check out this video over here, or maybe instead check out this one? Either way, you can't lose, so click now before you're a genetic mutant.